Coming up on City Spotlight, we're on location in Paris for this season five season finale here on City Spotlight. We'll get caught up on the latest going on with the Edgar County Community Foundation with Brad Tucker and Joe Hassler. Then we'll head over to Paris High School and talk with assistant principal at Paris High School, Mark Cox, who highlights some of the programs being offered at Paris High School. And we'll then wrap up this episode with a feature on a Paris tradition, the 93rd May Fate. We're wrapping up season five with an on-location episode in Paris, here on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at Consolidated.com. And welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. As you can see, we're on location for this episode, another episode here on Paris. We're back at the Paris Public Library. We were here recently for an episode involving PERC, and we're going to start this episode here on Paris talking about the Edgar County Community Foundation here in this first segment. And uh, we have two people to help us out, two first-time guests to the program. We have Joe Hassler and Brad Tucker. Joe and Brad, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to hearing your comments about the foundation. This is not our first time talking with the foundation here on City Spotlight. Uh, before we go into the what's going on with the foundation, you're both first-time guests. And uh, Joe, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? I'm retired from Illinois Cereal Mills. 20 some years now uh, and have a very successful retirement. Okay. I was involved in setting up the foundation in that there's just so much of the good money that had been earned in Edgar County that left Edgar County upon the death of whoever happened to be there. Uh, I consulted with two of the key business people. We started the foundation uh, and since then it's blossomed with the Tigers that we have on the board now. Okay. I've, I've been uninvolved for a number of years. Okay, very good. Thank you for the introduction. And Brad, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? I grew up in Edgar County, <coughs> um, fifth generation uh, farm uh, in the northern, north central part of the county. Um, University of Illinois and came back to the farm and uh, have been here for several years, uh, become involved with the foundation um, and uh, I serve as president of the board. Okay, very good. Glad to have you guys both on. And Joe, you, as you just mentioned there, you kind of got things rolling with the Edgar County Community Foundation 25 plus years or so. Yeah. Um, what are you most proud of what it has done in the two to three decades it has uh, done here in Paris and Edgar County? Well, there's a whole litany of good things they've done over the years. Uh, we have, as I pointed out, a lot of young tigers, young by my standards, uh, who've done a lot of good things. The board has been very active. I went to the other primary guy I could think of early on to be the leader, who was a stem winder named Warren Sperry. Uh, he's still doing that job. Uh, he's like me, he's getting a little long in the tooth, but he's doing really well. We've had Warren, Mary Liz Wright, and Christian Colvin on. So this is our, our third time, if I'm counting correctly here, uh, talking with the foundation. Um, and uh, one thing that is currently uh, going and that Christian Colvin mentioned last February when we talked with him and Mary Liz was about the Forever Fund and it's officially going as of now. Can you guys tell us, remind our audience a little bit again, what is the Forever Fund? The Forever Fund is, the, is a new endowment that um, will basically preserve uh, the principle and never draw on it. Uh, it's very appealing because of its permanence and uh, you know, contributions to the Forever Fund can be attached uh, with memorials with the understanding that the name or um, the name will be uh, intact and associated with a fund that's going to be there for a long time. The grants that we will, with, that we will um, be able to fund from that uh, will draw on the income, the principal, and dividends that it earns. Okay, and uh, how can people help or contribute with the Forever Fund? The easiest way is to go to our website and uh, the um, Edgar County Community Foundation website and it's a fairly uh, easy to follow pathway to making donations or contact uh, a member of the board 
um, would be another way to, that we're trying to make it very easy. Reception of people in the community to it being available? It's been great. Uh, we, th we, uh, we know and have seen that uh, a lot of people uh, appreciate this style of a fund because of its permanence. The principal won't be spent on any particular object or project uh, that the, uh, the fund will continue to, to work uh, well into the future. And that appeals to a lot of people who are grateful for um, the institutions and the places and the families that have given them a great start in life or a great place to live. And this is a way of paying forward, uh, paying back and paying forward uh, to a community uh, that works hard and um, we'll be able to um, extend blessings to those that come after us. Another thing that the, the Edgar County Community Foundation uh, has been doing is, is providing scholarships that's been mentioned here uh, with the previous members that have been on uh, City Spotlight. The caretakers of several different agency accounts that are scholarship accounts and we actually um, manage the process of scholarship selection. We have modernized that process and th there are several uh, scholarship funds that are that are extended to worthy students through our uh, our efforts. In the last year since we, we talked with uh, Mary Liz and Christian about, about the foundation, what was going on at the time, any of those things that you'd like to maybe uh, highlight for our audience at home, a couple of things you involved with Chrisman, uh, the Excel Academy, um, and Music in Paris, I saw something there with Warren Sperry involving uh, Brett Eldridge and a contribution for music and arts in Paris. Well, there's just there's been a very broad spectrum of things we've been involved in in all corners of the county. Um, it is a county foundation. Uh, we've been involved in promoting athletic um, uh, efforts, uh, the school um, facilities and programming. Uh, things that benefit just the health and well-being of the community as well as arts. We, and, and of course with the new Paris High School we were uh, very involved in trying to uh, raise funds to enhance the development of the new Paris High School. We'll be there for the, the last two segments of this episode. Look forward to going back to Paris High School. Uh, once again, uh, Joe, uh, before we wrap up this, uh, this, this segment here with you guys about the foundation, Again, you kind of got things rolling and you hear the things that are going on now here from Brad, uh, the Forever Fund, the scholarships, uh, um, your, your thoughts on, on what they're doing right now here in 2019. I couldn't be happier with what's happened with the fund. I couldn't be happier with where it's headed. It does a lot of good for a lot of people who can enjoy the benefits of the people before them who put something away. So it's been, it's been a delight for me. Brad, uh, for the audience at home, uh, uh, Part of what you guys are trying to do is improve lives here in Edgar County. Uh, what do you what do you enjoy about being a part of this? Uh, you're, you're the current president of the board of directors. So what 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 are you most proud of being a part of this? I just think it it is the opportunity to give back to um, a place that provided a great education and a great start in life, um, great work ethic and values for the families, especially farm families that like mine and uh, it is an opportunity to um, pay it forward and try to, to improve that quality of life for the next generation and generations to follow. Well, congratulations on your gentlemen's efforts from the start till now. Uh, leadership from 25 plus years sitting right here <laughs> talking, talking about, about the Edgar County Community Foundation. Foundation. We had Brad Tucker and Joe Hassler. We appreciate your time here on City Spotlight today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. Coming up next here on City Spotlight, we'll wrap up this episode with a couple of segments over at Paris High School. But first, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Paris. back here on City Spotlight. We continue this on location episode on Paris. As you can see, we've changed locations from the Paris Library. We are now at Paris High School for these final two segments of this 
season five finale here on City Spotlight, and uh, we're going to talk with a first-time guest here on the program, the assistant principal here at Paris High School, Mark Cox. Mark, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Nice to be a part of it. Uh, glad to be back here at Paris High School. I was doing some counting, Mark, uh, since this facility opened uh, in 2015. This is my sixth trip over here to Paris High School. A couple of things we're going to talk about in this segment with Mark. Uh, we've we've uh, We've been here and interviewed some people and shot some videos, so we're going to talk about that. But Mark, you're a first-time guest here on the program. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Well, uh, I am a Parisian. I was born and raised here. Um, went to EIU. Uh, this is uh, where I came back to in my teaching and career um, after a couple other stops. Mm -hmm. And this is my 14th year here at Paris High School, 10th year as assistant principal. Uh, what other, what other positions have you held here at Paris High School besides assistant principal? I was in the science department here mm -hmm. um, as well as um, participating in extracurricular stuff outside of, of the school mm -hmm. for uh, community service stuff with younger kids. Okay. Very good. As I mentioned, uh, we've uh, been here at Paris High School for a number of things, including the Paris Center of Fine Arts. So one thing that we are going to talk about here off the bat, uh, the program involving uh, with Illini FS and Dr. Howard Brown. We talked with Dr. Howard Brown and had some videos of some students back in April of 2017. That program is still going on. They're doing some soil testing involving uh, nitrogen, and uh, it will benefit farmers in the area. Uh, that program is still ongoing. What can you tell us about how it's going here as we tape here on May 6th, 2019. We're happy that we get to be a part of that and our kids get to be um, a part of a research program that is real life um, learning. We probably had 10 to 12 kids that got to be a part of the program on a regular basis. Um, they conjuncted with um, FFA. So we had FFA kids that would go out with Dr. Brown and do soil testing out in the field, so they did field research. Mm -hmm. Then we had groups of students that were in our chemistry um, classes, advanced chemistry classes with Mrs. Brett Block, who would do the actual testing in the STEM lab. So you had in-house research, and you had field research, and all these kids got to experience that. And we're actually meeting with Dr. Brown this week to discuss where we're going forward with it for the upcoming school year. Again, the benefactors for the students to be able to work with someone like Dr. Brown, they get out in the field get, and they get their hands dirty. Great, great field experience for all these kids. Uh, and I think um, with these facilities and the STEM lab that we have, that, that promotes people to want to come work with our kids and, and we're very thankful for it, everything that we've got here. All right, we'll talk about your correlation with EIU here in just a second, but one of the other classes you wanted to highlight here at Paris High School is the welding program. I understand you have a new, uh, new instructor there. We do. Uh, Jim Humrichhaus is a recently retired welding teacher from a different district. He li does live in Edgar County. We were grateful that he was interested to come to us. He works um, three periods a day and he, he teaches welding and a couple other classes. Um, we've got some kids doing some really neat stuff with Jim, and they're doing welding cert certifications. They are um, practicing different types of welds that can help them get into a job when they get mm -hmm. out, of, out of school. Um, I do know that Jim told us we, he had some kids that have taken um, pre-tests for entrance to different um, mm -hmm. junior colleges, wow. and, and they've scored very high with the welding practices that they've had so it's been it's been really good Jim has promoted this and they have done projects um, and that certification that has led a lot of interest into it and we're actually going to expand our wow. welding into a welding into welding two classes okay. in the next year um, and that's a great attribute to Jim Hummerkaus and his willingness to come and teach these boys how and girls how to uh, weld all at right. a top-notch level. So. All right, so maybe a few more sparks flying there in the, in the, with the welding classes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, we also were here at Paris High School to do a little correlation with, the, with Eastern Illinois University. Uh, we were here last uh, school year. Uh, Dr. Gopal Perianan was here uh, with his grad student. We taped that uh, February of last school year, and they were doing some pretty neat things there in the uh, STEM lab there. So maybe talk a little bit about uh, the relationship between Paris High School and Eastern Illinois University and some of the professors, faculty that have helped you guys out there. Okay, that, that started back before the school even opened mm -hmm. and uh, Dan Sheeran was, is, is a Paris native, but mm -hmm. he works at Eastern. 
and through Dan and former boss Dave Meister and myself, mm -hmm. we created a um, group that we would meet. We had we had EIU professors come over and and mm -hmm. and we went over there and met with them to discuss things that we could team up with for kids to not only our kids but their kids and in a teaching type session, uh, research type stuff. And it's really grown. We also have Gopal who has on a regular basis um, worked with our students. He would bring his grad students. Mm -hmm. Hosh Hoshni, Hoshni yes. um, was one of the regulars um, who did a great job working with our kids, giving presentations about what research they do mm -hmm. um, and how our kids could participate in that. And so what they did is they worked together. And I believe um, it was probably a year ago or two years ago, a couple of our kids got actually credit and published in one of the magazines wow. that Hoshni and Gopal had did, you know, presented their research with because they were part of the research itself. And I remember so, during the interview with Hoshni and, and Gopal, and they were wowed by the facility of the STEM lab, quite a marvel here at Paris High School. It is. It is. And I, and I believe we discussed something a few years ago about how we have not reached the full potential of that STEM lab, and, and we still haven't reached the full potential of that STEM lab. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we will be, or I'm pretty sure we will be hiring a former professor from Eastern, um, Sherry Lehman, as our STEM coordinator wow. who will help kind of lead the way of what we were trying to do with making contacts with other universities and getting uh, research type projects uh, going mm -hmm. and um, well, I'm, I'm very hopeful that that will work out. Sherry spent the last two years coming over mm -hmm. from Eastern working with Doug Happ, our physics teacher, and mm -hmm. doing lots of different types of projects with the kids mm -hmm. and she's recently retired and we're, we're pretty thankful that she's willing to come over here and give this a shot and, and make that grow. Fantastic. It's exciting times moving forward with the STEM lab here at Paris High School. Let's, let's dive right into this facility, Mark. As, uh, as folks know, uh, this is the fourth uh, school year, so we have a graduating class here that have been here all four years that the school has been open. First class to graduate here after four years of fantastic in the building. Yep. Facility was dedicated here, the new Paris High School. I still call it that. I apologize to folks home. It's it's Paris High School, but yep. it was dedicated in June of 2015. And uh, the former, as you mentioned, former principal Meister at the time, he gave me a tour of the facility. Now, four years later, uh, does, it, does it still why you the facility that you have here for the students here in Paris High School, the community? Obviously, the Paris Center of Fine Arts has opened up doors for a lot of opportunities. Talk about your facility that you have here in Paris, Illinois. I, I, I still think it wows people. Um, you know, our, our Paris Center of Fine Arts and, and the community do a great job of bringing in acts. Mm -hmm. um, you get compliments from these acts that come here. They're, they're, they're astonished of what this small community has to offer and, and are happy to come and, and do their, their shows, which is awesome. Music and our um, thespians here at school thoroughly enjoy it. There's, there's a large group of kids that participate in the arts here mm -hmm. and, and we're happy to, to have that type of um, complex that we can do this in. So The last two uh, spring musicals, we've talked with Tanner Laughlin over there in the Paris Center, Paris Center of Fine Arts during their tech week as they got ready for their musicals. And he's still, uh, Paris, Paris is also a na uh, Paris native, Tanner Laughlin is. Mm -hmm. It still wows him to this day that they have that kind of a facility for, for the talented students here at Paris High School to perform these musicals. I think every kid that gets to participate in that, if, if not during the course of it, afterwards, just it, they're still in awe of what they got to be a part of and, and what they got to use. And I think we have a lot of things here, just like the STEM lab, you know, the kids that get to go in there and do that research and work with professors uh, from EIU mm -hmm. or, or the staff here, it's, it's amazing. We, we have kids that come in from the elementaries that come to a chem club mm -hmm. through Brett Block and we use the STEM lab for them to get interested in science wow. and promote the program within ourselves. So Great. also a, a neat, um, activity that we do here. So, uh, Before we tape this segment here with Mark, uh, you showed me a new addition uh, over near the, on the outside of the building, near the uh, ball diamonds. Uh, tell us a little about that new little addition you have there. It's kind of a new learning, it's learning a, area? We, ha we have extended learning areas in the building, right. um, which are actually extensions of classrooms, classrooms with 
with walls that open, glass walls that can open and you have a bigger area to go do stuff. Mm -hmm. um, well, we have this space outside that is like a patio, but it, uh, we've installed um, with the idea to provide some, some shade. Mrs. Lorraine Bailey had a great idea for something to be put out there to make it more user friendly. And so we have this big pergola that our maintenance built and now we have kids and students uh, going out there in classes and it's, so it's an extended learning area that's actually outside. So on nice days, we don't just have to go to the extended learning areas right. on the inside. It's, it's, and, and, it's, and it's beautiful. You got a beautiful view. It's it's calming. Kids can go out there and relax while they work. Um, beautiful, beautiful day like today. We had a little video of yeah. some students. I think it was they were doing some knitting or weaving outside. And, weaving uh, for the art class. Yeah. Be beautiful working. Beautiful working conditions. Yes. Okay. Why why not go outside and and do your work if you can? Right. All right. Very good. Catching up on the latest going on here at Paris High School with assistant principal here at Paris High School, Mark Cox. Mark, it's been a pleasure having you on City Spotlight. Thank you. Thank you so much. And coming up next here on City Spotlight, we'll wrap up Season 5 of City Spotlight and this episode on Paris with a feature on a Paris tradition, the 93rd May Fate. Thanks for watching. Flower power. Flower power. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hello, my name is Jessica Blair, and I am the director for the May Fate here at Paris High School. This is the 93rd year that... Um, the school has been doing it. We are one of two schools that continue May Fate, so it's a pretty big tradition uh, that we would like to keep here in Paris. Kayla is the daughter of Amber Vice. Jamie is the daughter of Melanie and Raymond Chantrell. What it does is it honors our senior girls. So every girl uh, has a big formal dress and is introduced one by one, takes the runway with a red carpet uh, with their best friend most of the time, and um, are set up here and honored for the evening. Hannah Lane Ruth Bowers. My grandmother was a first grader, um, so they have flower girls that are chosen from every first grade class in town and they also have a junior escort that walks them down the red carpet as well and my grandmother was one of them and then she walked out as a senior my mother was a senior my aunt me sister it's it's a big family thing for me as well i start coming up with a theme and the songs about october or november and i start piecing it together changing out songs trying to figure out how you know everything is going to flow and then we come back from Christmas vacation and I have all the underclassmen sign up to participate. And then we always start the Sunday after, um, the first Sunday in February. Ladies from the class of 2019. Tonight, we will jump around as their underclassmen are ready to celebrate these senior girls. Involved in this production, it is all put on by kids. I am, yes, the director, I oversee, but they choreograph all the routines, they are in charge, they put the formations together. Uh, my floor crew and light crew put, um, they put the fence up, they put the lights up, they truly take charge, this is their production. We have 164 kids at this high school that will be involved in May Fate Friday night, whether it's dancing, whether it's uh, being a senior girl walking out or a part of our crew, but 164 kids involved says a lot. So I've been the director for 16 years. My best friend, um, Amanda Pheasant, uh, she's no longer with us, but she and I took over 16 years ago and I just keep trucking. So it's something that both of us love to do, and I just haven't decided to give it up yet. You're taking care of mom. That's fine. You're taking care of I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have tickets I can take. What? We will have people lined up at the doors outside around 4 o'clock. Uh, that's how big of a deal it is. Doors open at 6, and they will sit here with excitement, waiting for the night to start um, at 8 o'clock. And once 8 o'clock hits, you know, lights go down, 
um, excitement builds. Those senior ladies will take that red carpet and everyone just has their moment. We start with a intro dance. We, it usually is very energetic and lively about getting a party started, um, getting the night pumped up, and then as soon as that's finished, we will honor the senior girls. Macy Ella Richards. We will have the junior escorts and flower girls come out, followed by our crown bearer, and then our court and queen, which is not revealed until that moment. We keep everything a secret. First attendant to the May Bay Queen, Peyton Marie Hughes. Your 2019 May Bay Queen, please welcome Aubrey Lee Sanders. Following the court, we will have a song of dedication sung by high school seniors to their seniors. And then the evening takes off with dances. Every class, fresh, and every underclassman, freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, each will be featured in two numbers. We also have a tumbling act and a maypole and a flashlight dance. And once that is all finished, um, every kid will come back down to the floor and do a um, finale together. And then they will leave the floor and then I invite fathers or special family members to come down and have one last dance with their, with their um, young lady for the evening. Paris is extremely protective and proud of Mayfate because when we started talking about building a new high school, the community was thoroughly involved and they were asked, what is important? What do we want to keep? What is you know, something we want to you know, grab a hold of and make sure it continues on to the new high school? And nearly every single list had Mayfate. And it doesn't surprise me one drop. And so the community understood that it is something that has to continue, and, and it has, and they make sure of it. This is their night, and this is all about them, and the last night that is just the senior girls together as one for the last time, because graduation is just in a couple weeks, and so it's just such a memorable moment for them to just take hold of and, and truly remember for a lifetime. We had the oldest queen with us that is still with us, um, to, no, last year, last year, the oldest queen alive um, came and we introduced her and she remembered her senior year, you know, so it, it is something that you'll remember forever. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.